Welcome to Charles TV channel, um, the channel that helps you find answers to real life situations that can help improve your life. If you're new to this channel, remember to subscribe, to like and share this video. Also leave your comments and your contributions to help the channel grow. Uh, today we are dealing with how to process a money claim. This is typically, most people will call it um, small claims or small claims court. Um, but today we are here to give you information. If you feel as an individual that you have suffered financial loss uh, for a neglect in service, this can be against an individual, it can be against a company or an institution, then you are entitled to process a money claim uh, application against such institutions or individuals or companies to recover your financial loss or money loss. The forms to use uh, for this type of application is form N1 and form N1A. The form N1 is the actual application form, the money claim form, application to the court. And form N1A is the notes that you need to read to ensure that you complete the forms correctly and present it and also pay the appropriate fees. Remember that form N1 and form N1A, which can be obtained from the UK government website, is only intended for use for money claims only. And so we are going to be looking at how to apply, how to apply to the court for a money claim, that is the county court. Why do you apply? Who can you make this claim against? What are the sort of amounts that the county court will deal in concerning uh, money claims? And what are the costs involved and the outcomes that you can expect? So what we have typically come to know as a small claims court, in effect, um, that terminology is normally used incorrectly and um, what it really is is a small claims truck and this deals with basically the size of the amount that you can claim against an individual against a company or against an institution and typically uh, the small claims truck deals with amounts uh, ten thousand pounds or less and if the amounts are more than ten thousand pounds then this may follow a fast track or a multi-track system. And so the small claims track tends to um, use a, a very small amount of court time, typically about two hours for obviously issues of money claims less than 10,000. Typically, you the claimant will present your case your arguments as to why you think you are owed that money. The court will receive your documents. They will then intend uh, inform the defendant of your claim. The defendant can also make their counterclaim. And then, obviously, with the information presented to the court, a judgment will be made whether in your favor or in the other party's favor. Now, typically, uh, the costs involved are fixed. And so this is why, um, if it's difficult for an individual uh, to have sufficient money to engage a lawyer, they may be able to process uh, these money claims themselves. So how do you apply? Uh, typically, 
you can make this application on government website by going into Google and searching for money claim. This will lead you onto the government website where you can actually uh, process this application. I personally prefer to use the old system, which is the paper form. Obviously, doing things online is better and obviously it's electronic and it allows, it is basically better for the court and it will cost you relatively cheaper than when you go uh, for the old uh, paper form. Uh, however, for me, with the paper form, I am able to gather my evidence, uh, obviously all on the paper form. You end up doing a lot of, you know, sort of photocopying and stuff like that. But it's very well organized in that way. And you can actually, um, you know, check and tick everything to make sure that you have all the relevant uh, evidence to support your case. So these are the two ways that um, you can make your application for money claims to the court. If you go down the paper form route, you will have to prepare three documents. One, a copy for yourself, the main copy for the court, and also another copy which will be appropriate for you to also put in an envelope for the defendant. So there is a lot of, you know, um, photocopying and paperwork involved. And so if you can typically do it online, then all the better. Why do you apply to your county court for the small money claim? Um, you do these things, as I said, if you have suffered financial loss due to a neglect of service uh, or any other reason uh, by an individual, by a company or an institution, then you are surely well within your rights to apply to the county court uh, to recover monies that you have lost. Who can you uh, claim against? Once again, as mentioned earlier, you can claim it against an individual, against a company or an institution. And what are the sort of amounts? Uh, amounts uh, can range as small as zero uh, to 10,000 and that will be covered under the small claims track. And if the amounts are bigger in excess of 10,000 pounds, then this may move to the fast track and multi-track uh, systems, which requires sometimes a day or more than a day of court time. Um, next thing is the cost. So reason why, obviously, for anything legal, it is always best advice to use a lawyer to do these um, applications on your behalf because they are better suit, suited uh, to do this on your behalf. However, you may basically consider uh, the amount of money that you are claiming for. And if such amounts are very small, uh, let's say typically um, less than three thousand pounds, then it is likely that even if you win, you may not necessarily receive any money because this may go into your uh, basically your lawyer uh, preparing the case on your behalf. And so this is why if the amounts are small, you may uh, want to uh, get involved and get it done yourself. So I am just going to uh, move quickly to show you what the form looks like, how to complete it, and also read out the notes. So typically, form N1, as I said, can be downloaded of the government website and it's actually a five page document. So I'm just gonna, this as you can see is the first page of the form N1. So I am just going to run through it uh, so that you get to see how the form is structured and how to complete it. So with the form N1, as you can see, typically on the top right corner, uh, this is court information. 
they will allocate a claim number and an issue date once obviously you have sent um, your forms to the court to the county court uh, either online or by recorded post so the top right corner is the official uh, de uh, details that to be completed by the court now if we move here um, onto the left corner as you can see the claimant is the person who is initiating the money claim and so let's say if that is typically myself then i will be putting my name and my address including my full postcode in the top left corner then on the next uh, section as you can see is the details of the defendant and the defendant is the party which can be an individual a company or an institution that you are basically raising the claim against then on this level in the middle of the form it asks you to give uh, brief details of your claim and so it is very good for you to state um, whatever happened if you can possibly number the events as they follow for example you could say um, I got somebody to come in to install some flooring for me they installed it they charged me a price they gave me a guarantee and uh, you know before the guarantee a damage has occurred maybe through the ins uh, faulty installation and therefore you are wanting to make this claim against uh, this individual or a company and so this you know can range from all kinds of uh, different cases but it's just you just need to give a very brief um, account on this page then once again you state the value of the loss that you have incurred that you are basically intending to recover from the other party and you must also remember that if you if there's anything to do with a post if you've incurred any postal cost you know it all minor cost that involves you preparing this form you must remember to put it in there uh, so typically for a small claims track i will only expect that your claim maybe between zero and three thousand or three thousand to five thousand or five thousand to ten thousand so once again on the front page at this bottom left corner here you are once again going to repeat the details of the defendant uh, once again that can be an individual a company or an institution on the right uh, bottom corner of the first page you are now going to put in your claim amount your court fees if you know if you're using a legal representative who is also charging you you put it in there and then you get your total uh, claim at the bottom right corner that says total amount great so as you can see here at the bottom left corner you can see it's N1, that is the name of the form, N1 claim form, CPR part 7, 06.22. So that I am assuming that is um, obviously uh, the year that this form has been made available by the government uh, website. So we quickly move on to page 2 of form N1. Once again, as you can see, at the um, top right corner once again the reference is repeated but that reference will be put in by the court upon receipt of your basically your document or your docket um, so as you can see here you must indicate your preferred county court hearing center for hearing here now this section we are going to cover when we go into reading form N1, but it's typically the county court uh, money claim uh, center that you are going to input or write in this section. 
it goes on to say, do you believe or do you believe you or a witness who will give evidence on your behalf are vulnerable in any way which the court needs to consider? So this as well, um, if you have any witnesses, which I don't really expect uh, for a small money claim, but if you do, then they want to know if, you know, the person is vulnerable and that they may be needing any support. You must state that. If not, you just complete no. Uh, if yes, you need to explain in this box. It goes on also to ask you, uh, does or will your claim include any issue under Human Rights Act 1998? Nine out of ten times, that answer will be a no. But obviously, in an unusual circumstances, it may be yes. And once again, you need to complete this section of the forms. So we quickly move on to uh, the third section, uh, page three of the forms. Once again, in page three, as you can see, particulars of claim. So if you as the individual are preparing this uh, case against an individual, against a company or an institution, you need to get your facts right because that is what is going to help you win a case. Once again, you need to organize all your documents in order. You need to label them and you need to put them in a chronological order. And so you can label them either A, B, C, 1, 2, 3. And obviously they can be grouped as well. But you need to have everything well organized. Listed here, this will be more to do with documents that you attach to support your case. So once again, you have a whole page to do this. Then we move on. To the fourth page so this is the statement of truth in the top right corner you can see you are reminded that a copy of this claim form must be served on all other parties so you know if you're making this claim against more than one party and you are intending to do this uh, in a paper form then you've got a lot of photocopies to make um, alternatively the best way is to do it online if you can do that and attach all the relevant files then that will be great but here you need to make a statement of truth so anytime as an individual you are presenting a case uh, to the court to get redress you need to be truthful in all that you say you know you need to make sure that you are presenting facts and so you need to sign this statement of truth so which says i understand that proceedings for contempt of court may be brought against a person who makes or causes to be made a false statement in a document verified by a statement of truth without an honest belief in its truth. So what this actually means is that whatever documents, supporting documents or any statements that you have made in the completion of Form N1 must be truth to your knowledge. So below that, you once again take the box um, as required so one the first one will be i believe that the facts stated in this form and any attached sheets are true this is when you are actually processing the application yourself uh, then the second one which you may not necessarily have to take but depending who is doing it for you it says the claimant believes that the facts stated in this claim form and any attached sheet are true. I am authorized by the claimant to sign this statement. So this will be um, when somebody is representing you. So it can be a friend, 
a litigation friend or it can be a legal representative that you have appointed they will then take that box so they are signing on your behalf but in this case you are doing it yourself and so you take the first box so here you sign your signature uh, and then once again with the three items listed on the signature you cross the box you be in the claimant if you are having a friend a litigation friend then they will take the second box and then it says litigation friend where claimant is a child or protected party it can be an, a protected adult the if you are using a legal uh, representative then they will take the third box but typically it will be the first box that you take and then once again you put in the date the year the month and the year and then you insert your full name you write down your full name um once again if you are using a legal representative or a firm then they will put their name name of the claimant's legal representative firm uh, then in the last one if signing on behalf of firm or company give position or office help so this will be a situation where the party that is raising uh, this uh, claim is actually doing it on behalf of a company so it can be a company director can be the company secretary or anybody in an official capacity uh, to carry out this uh, claim on behalf of that company and this is the final sheet the fifth uh, sheet so once again claimants or claimants legal representative address to which documents must should be sent right so you the claimant you are now going to repeat your details in here uh, this is when if there is the need for the court to revert to you with any documents they will typically um, you know use this address so once again you go through it with your you know first line of your address your town or city your county and your postcode then this section as well, you put in your phone number. Um, if you prefer uh, to generate your own reference uh, for the case, you can also put in your reference. It could be a company conducting um, uh, this uh, claim. And so they will put in a reference and then an email address. And that should conclude the completion of money claim form N1 which can then be basically posted um, by recorded post or special delivery to the court to the county court um, at this stage I am going to go into the section of the notes now typically you don't complete this form until you have read all the notes right and the notes are in form n1a so i am going to begin the reading of form n1a which is the notes that you need in completing form n1 this can also be obtained from government website remember to subscribe to the channel like it share this video and leave your comments notes for claimants on completing a claim form before you begin completing the claim form you must think about whether alternative dispute resolution adr is a better way to reach an agreement before going to court the leaflet i am in a dispute what can i do explain more about ADR and how you can attempt to settle your claim. Please read all the notes which follow the order in which information 
is required on the form. Before completing this form, consider whether you might prefer to issue online www.moneyclaims.gov.uk. If you are filling in the form by hand, please use black ink and write in block capitals. Copy the completed form and the defendant's note for guidance so that you have one copy for yourself, one copy for the court, and one copy for each defendant. If the claim form, if the claim is for a sum of money, then you must send it to the county court money claims center, P.O. Box 527, Salford, M50BY. And this address is in Manchester. It's in Greater Manchester. So typically, the form N1, which we completed for money claim, must be sent to this address. And I'm going to repeat this line. If the claim is for a sum of money, then you must send it to the County Court Money Claims Centre, P.O. Box 527, Salford, M50BY. And this is a Greater Manchester address. If it is a High Court claim or is a claim for anything other than money, you should send the form and the fees to a court office. You can get additional help in completing this form from the Money Claims Help Desk. Phone number 0300-123-1372. If you need legal advice, you should contact a solicitor or a Citizens Advice Bureau. Further information may be obtained from direct.gov.uk or from the court in a series of free leaflets. So this is the notes uh, on completing the form N1. Heading. You must fill in the heading of the form to indicate the name of the court where you want the claim to be issued. If you want the claim to proceed in the county court and it's for money only, you must enter County Court Money Claims Center. The claimant and defendant. As the person issuing the claim, you are called the claimant. Please enter your name and address. The person you are suing is called the defendant. Please enter their name. You must provide the following information about yourself and the defendant according to the capacity in which you are suing and in which the defendant is being sued. Providing information about yourself and the defendant. Full address including postcode. You should provide the address including postcode for yourself and the defendant or its equivalent in any European economic area. EEA state if applicable. If an address does not have a postcode, you will need to ask the judge for permission to serve the claim with this information missing. There is no additional fee for this, but the court will not allow your claim to be served without a postcode unless you have permission from the judge when suing or being sued. An individual, you must enter his or her full name where known, including the title, for example, Mr., Mrs., Miss, Doctor, and residential address, postcode, and telephone number where the defendant is a proprietor of a business. Go back here. Partner in a firm or an individual sued in the name of a club or other unincorporated 
associations. The address for service should be the usual or last known place of residence or principal place of business where the individual is trading under another name. You must enter his or her full abbreviated, unabbreviated name where known and the title by which he or she is known and the full name under which he or she is trading. For example, Mr. John Smith trading as Smith Groceries. Suing or being sued in a representative capacity, you must say that the capacity is, for example, Mr. Joe Blocks as the representative of Mrs. Sharon Blocks' disease. Suing or being sued in the name of a club or other unincorporated association are the words suing, sued on behalf of, followed by the name of the club or the unincorporated association. An unincorporated business affair, in the case of a partnership, other than a limited liability partnership, you must enter the full name of the business followed by the suffix or a firm, for example, band box, a firm, and an address including postcode for service. They may either be one of the partner's residential addresses or the principal or last known place of business of the firm. A company registered in England and Wales or a limited liability partnership. In the case of a registered company or limited liability partnership, enter the full name followed by the appropriate suffix, for example, limited, and an address including postcode, which is either the company's registered office or any place of business in the UK that has a connection with a claim. Example where goods were bought. Okay, so we are still on form N1A. A corporation other than a company enter the full name of the corporation and any suffix and the address including postcode in the UK which is either its principal office or other place where a corporation carries an activity and which has a connection with the claim. Okay, so this uh, will be the end of reading of Form N1 and the completion of Form N1. Remember to hit the subscribe button, like and share this video uh, to help yourself and to help any friend of yours that seeks to bring a small money claims uh, to a county court. Thank you for watching this channel once again.